Okay, let's talk about factoring out the GCF. And the GCF is what we call the greatest common factor. You absolutely need to know how to do this, okay? Factoring is a fundamental skill in algebra and beyond, okay? Uh, it's one of these skills that if you don't have your factoring you know, abilities down, you're really not gonna be able to continue on with your math education, okay? Take it from me, I've been doing this for many, many years. Um, now, the reverse is true. If you're good at factoring, it's going to make your life a lot easier. And the beginning point with factoring and learning this stuff is really getting down this greatest common factor. So if you've been struggling with factoring, don't panic. Okay, you're in the right place because you want to start uh, by making sure you understand the greatest common factor. So we're going to get into that. And of course, we're going to tackle this problem and a few others. But before we do that, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over many years I've constructed a ton of super comprehensive, full video-based uh, math courses. So uh, if you need to take an online math class or you just need math help with the course you're taking, I'm going to leave a link to my uh, math help program in the description of this video. You can check that out. Also, I offer some um, very comprehensive notes, uh, pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, trigonometry. So if you, um, you know, your note taking is not going so good, you need to improve your note taking. Actually, I have some other videos on my YouTube channels on that. But you know, if you're struggling with that, you need a good pair, really good pair of uh, notes. Uh, you can find those in the description or underneath uh, this video as well. Okay, so let's get to the greatest common factor, and here is our problem. Now, first thing, let's just talk about uh, number values. So the greatest common factor. Uh, the GCF applies to both uh, numbers, okay, like 4, 8, 12 here, and variables, okay? So let's just talk about numbers uh, first off, okay? So we got 4, okay, we have this number 4, we have this number negative 8, but let's just focus on the 8, and we have 12. So let's just, uh, you know, revisit the GCF. It's greatest common factor, all right? So... Um, factors are what? Well, factors are um, ways we can write a number as a product of uh, two or more numbers. So, for example, 4, I can write that as 4 times 1. Okay, 8, I can write as 4 times 2. And 12, I can write as um, 4 times 3. Okay, now, that's one way I can write... Uh, these numbers. Now I can write four. Let me kind of just erase this here. So those are one ways. Those are factors of those numbers. Now four I could also write as two times two. Eight I can write as two times four. And 12 I can write as two times six. Okay, so let's just talk about um, uh, each of these uh, values four, eight, and 12. Now, these are factors of these numbers. Okay, now we're looking for the greatest common factor. So each of these numbers has factors, right? These are some factors of these respective numbers. So what do they have in common? Let's just start breaking this down. Okay, forget the greatest part right now. What are what are common factors these numbers have? So just scanning through it, they're like, oh, this has a two, this has a two, this has a two. Okay, so do these numbers have co a, a common factor? Yes, they have two as a common factor. So two would be a common factor, okay, uh, for the numbers four, eight, and 12. But I'm trying to find the greatest common factor. I'm trying to find the greatest common factor. So looking at these numbers, I'm like, yeah, I can write these values differently. I can write, again, four as four times one, eight as four times two, and 12 as four times three, that these are also factors of those numbers. And I'm like, do I have common factors? Yeah, I have four. And four is the greatest, greatest common factor, okay? Greatest common factor, right? So although two is a uh, common factor, it's not the greatest, four is the greatest, okay? All right, so I'm kind of speeding through um, some things on how we, um, you know, can uh, break down and find the greatest common factors with more, yeah, more 
uh, complicated problems. But I just want to try to explain this to you in an easy way to understand. Hey, we're looking for the greatest common factor. So you want to be thinking, hey, what's the greatest, the biggest number these guys have in um, uh, common? So now let's see how we factor this out. All right, so here we have two was a common factor, and four is the greatest common factor, okay? So if I was gonna factor out a two, the way you're gonna do this is, you're gonna use the distributive property. So you're gonna write a two here. Now this is not the greatest common factor, but I'm just gonna show you something. So you're gonna write a two here, and you're gonna put parentheses, okay? And now you're gonna be thinking, yeah, I can give myself some more room. You're gonna be thinking, two times what gets me back to four X squared? So if you remember, Okay, let's just do this here. Two times two. This was four times two, or let's do it two times four. And this was two times six. Okay, so if I factor out a two to get back to four uh, x squared, I can put a two x squared. Okay, so I'm taking out a two. So I'm left with a two x squared. Okay, see that? All right, so this is going to be a distributive property situation. Minus, what do you think is going to be right here? Okay, well, I'm taking out a 2, so I'm left with a 4. So that would be 4x. And then what would be this final part of this problem would be plus 6. Okay, so here I factored out a common factor of 2. Da, 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 and I'm left with these values. Okay, you kind of see the pattern here, right? That's because if I take this 2 and I multiply it back in using a distributor property, I will get back to the original problem. So I just factored right here. I factored out a 2. So what did I do? Well, I factored. I, you know, I factored out a 2. Okay. So, but if I look inside here, I'm like, man, I can factor out another 2. I'm not completely done. So I don't want to do like double work. So let's go ahead and take care of this by factoring out the greatest common factor. All right, so this is the whole idea behind it. So again, remember I had four times one, four times two, and four times three. This is the greatest common factor, so I'm gonna factor out a four, okay? So I'll write my little four right there. And now what's left? One, okay? So that'd be a one X squared, but we could just write x squared technically, okay? But uh, you could just put a little one x squared minus what's gonna be left in here. That's gonna be a two x, all right? Two x plus, you guessed it, that'd be three, okay? So I just factored out the greatest common factor, greatest common factor right there, because if I multiply that four times one x squared, I get back to four x squared, Okay, four times negative two is gonna get back to negative eight X, right? And uh, four times this uh, three is gonna get me back to 12, all right? So I took this and I factored out the greatest common factor and that's what you wanna do, okay? You wanna factor out expressions, algebraic expressions completely. Okay, so hopefully uh, this is a good quick review or cleared up some confusion. Now let's go ahead and practice this with some uh, additional problems. Now, here is a problem that we have both numbers and we have some variables involved. So let's not be afraid of this problem. First of all, let me ask you, what is the greatest common factor? Just focus in on the number part first, okay? So when you're doing a problem like this, you're gonna have to focus on the number part and then you're, we'll, we'll talk about the variable part. So what's the greatest common factor between six and 10? Okay, so let's see about this, all right? So we know that this is two times three. There's really not too many ways I can write that, right? And this will be two times five. So the greatest common factor is gonna be two, okay? All right, so two is gonna be the greatest common factor. So with the numbers. Now, here we have X's and Y's and the X and Y over here. So the way we factor out uh, the greatest common factor with variables is we have to take we have to look at what's in common between these uh, terms. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have an x squared here, an x times an x, and then I have an x right here, okay, x times 1. So what is the greatest uh, factor they have in common? This has two x's, but this only has one. So this has one x here. This also has one x. So one x is going to be part of our greatest common factor, 
okay? Not two X's, because they only have one in common. This guy only has one. This has two, but they only have one in common. So how about the Y's? Okay, let's look at the Y's. So same thing here. This has three Y's, Y times Y times Y. And this has Y times Y, two Y's, okay? So how many Y's do they have in common? They have two Y's in common. So that's Y squared, okay? All right, so that is our greatest common factor. So now, knowing that, I can go 2X Y squared, parentheses, okay? Now, what is going to be left in this spot right here? Okay, now, if we just remember, when we did our factors, 6 was 2 times 3, so we'll have a 3 left, okay? Now, when I multiply back in, I need to get to an X squared, but I have an X, so I'm going to need an X there, all right? So X times X gets me back to X squared, and I need a Y cubed, so I have a Y squared, so I'm going to need a Y. Okay, so this is going to be my first term, plus 10 is 2 times 5, all right? I have my 2, so this is going to be a 5, all right? Let me kind of make this a little bit neater. And to get back to x, y squared, I already have an x. So I don't need an x, I just, and I don't need a y squared as well, right? I have the x and I have the y squared. So when I multiply back in, I'm going to get back to 10xy squared. So I am done. Okay, so this is it. All right. I factored out the greatest common factor of 2xy squared. And I'm left with this. So you can see uh, to be good at factoring out the greatest common factor, you got to be good at the distributive property. All right. In other words, you got to be able to do problems like 3x times 4xy minus 2 uh, y. Okay. So in other words, when you multiply, this is going to be what? That's going to be 12 X times X is X squared. And then we have a Y minus three X times negative two Y is going to be six X Y. Okay. So if you're struggling with the greatest common factor, make sure you can multiply, um, using the distributive property. That's another area of weakness for students when they're struggling with the greatest common factor. All right, let's take a look at this problem and we'll call this a wrap. All right, so how do we factor this out? So if you wanna go ahead and try this real quick, you can go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're like, okay, I have numbers, but I don't have any like common factors between four and five. That's hopefully pretty obvious, but here I have an X1 x plus 1 cubed, so this is really x plus 1 times x plus 1 times an x plus 1. Okay, that's what this means, and then I have an x plus 1 over here. So we do have some common factors, all right? These are factors. This is 5 times that, and this is 4 times this, okay? So what are some common factors? This is all multiplication. Well, I have 1 here, and I have 1 over here. I have 3, but I, could, uh, I have 1 in common. So x plus 1 is my GCF. My GCF is X plus one, okay? So if I factor out my GCF, let's do it down here, okay? That's gonna be X plus one, all right? What's gonna be remaining? Well, my four will be remaining. My X plus one, right here, I have two of them, so I can write that as X plus one squared, minus, uh, and what's left over here? Just a five, five, okay? And there is my answer. Okay, so greatest common factor. Again, start with the basic easy problems. When you're doing this, whether you're taking a, uh, I'm assuming you're studying this in some sort of math class, go, sh go through and make sure that you do all your easy problems first, okay? Then work your way up. Get the concept down, okay? Uh, I try to cover a decent amount of ground in this video, but hopefully, you know, uh, this cleared up some conceptual confusion that you might have had about factors and common factors and, of course, the greatest common factors and how we can kind of see them in these problems. The bottom line is you need to know how to factor. And quite frankly, you're not going to master factoring in, um, you know, a quick video like this. All right, this, is, this video is designed to help clear up some confusion, teach you real quick. But, you know, it's really not a complete full lesson. 
And uh, it's not going to really do you much help unless you practice. You've got to practice, practice, practice. So if you want to see a ton of videos, a ton of problems with video demonstrations, and you really need that kind of support, then you would definitely want to check out one of my math courses. I would suggest maybe like uh, Algebra 1. Um, I really get into uh, factoring pretty heavy duty there. Uh, so, of course, any of my other courses above and beyond that, uh, I'll have factoring. And they're not so much in pre-algebra. In pre-algebra, you kind of get used to yeah, well, the, we are talking about the greatest common factor in pre-algebra, but in a more in a uh, basic uh, sense. And, of course, um, my notes can help you out. And I do have other videos on the greatest common factor on my YouTube channel. But if you found some value in this video, I definitely appreciate you smashing that like button. And uh, hopefully, uh, if you like my teaching style, uh, please consider becoming a subscriber. I'm posting stuff all the time. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years. Uh, as you probably can tell, my passion is teaching math. So if I'm helping you out, then I'm doing my job. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.